Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining a VoIP Supply and GrantStream webinar. Uh, today, we will be discussing how to sell the WP series. Myself, I am Brian Hyrick with VoIP Supply, along with my colleague, Chris Dow of GrantStream. And Chris, you just want to advance to the next slide, please? All right, so there's a question bubble lower right hand corner. Uh, if you guys want to click that throughout, uh, Chris and I definitely want to make this more of a conversation, keep it as interactive as possible. Uh, so feel free, we'll address your questions live or uh, even at the end uh, of this presentation, you can ask your questions as well. Uh, but please feel free. <clears throat> And then the next slide. Uh, so those of you who do not know or are not aware, VoIP Supply has been around since 2002. Uh, we do have, I think we need to update that number. We have well over 125,000 active customers right now worldwide. Um, and some of the benefits to being a reseller and partner of VoIP Supply is uh, we do have a device as a service program. So it gives you a way to move everything um, from a capital expense to an operational expense, um, you can rent your GrantStream products at one easy low payment. Uh, that's something unique that VoIP Supply does offer. Uh, we do do provisioning of the hardware for you, so your WP series phones, uh, if your client is remote and you do not want to go on site, VoIP Supply can provision that hardware for you and blind ship it directly to your customer, ready to plug and play to your specifications. VoIP Supply also has a marketplace as well. We try to make it a one-stop shop from everything from connectivity, so your SIP trunks, your uh, PBX cloud hosting, all the way down to your headsets and ancillary devices. So if you'd like to learn more about that, uh, contact me. I'll share my contact information and reach out to do some one-on-ones with you as well at the end of this presentation. Along with provisioning, VoIP Supply does offer fulfillment. Uh, we offer professional services uh, with multiple warehouse locations throughout uh, North America, and you will get real-time access uh, to your own private inventory as well, so you can uh, manage and maintain that. If you're ever on site and there is some older, let's say, polycom uh, equipment or undesirable Yealink equipment on site, uh, let us know. It's possible that VoIP Supply can offer you some cash or store credit towards your order and help uh, your customer and help you win that deal by taking that older equipment off site. On the flip side of that, VoIP Supply does have our reclaim line uh, where we do offer reconditioned devices at a fraction of the cost uh, to you in going through the VoIP Supply 10-step reconditioning process. And with that, uh, let's pass the torch over to Chris Dow, and Chris is going to dig into the WP series from GrantStream. Chris, you want to take it away? Sure thing. Appreciate it, Brian. Good intro. Uh, hope appreciate everyone... you, and thanks for taking the time with us today, Chris. Yeah, and I appreciate, uh, appreciate you and, and everyone here on the webinar itself. Uh, going to be touching and, and talking about kind of a topic near and, and dear to all of our hearts right now with everything going on. Uh, and I, I do hope everyone's staying safe. But that is Wi-Fi voice and video. Uh, how, you know, you can extend SIP through Wi-Fi networks, create truly wireless deployments. Obviously, this is ideal for remote workers, which it will get into on this topic. Uh, but also a major growth opportunity, especially with the kind of working remote and, and work from home scenarios becoming a little more prevalent uh, in, in this day and age. So what, what are advantages of Wi-Fi voice? Uh, historically speaking, it, it's kind of scared some people off, to be honest, uh, voice over Wi-Fi. It's become a lot better over the last couple of years. Uh, especially if if you guys or you guys and gals have all been around and have deployed Wi-Fi voice in the past versus now, uh, it's night and day. So some of the advantages, obviously, we're utilizing the Wi-Fi networks that are already there and, and prevalent. 
everyone's, or for the most part, everyone has internet at the house. Essentially, we're just piggybacking off that network. It's easy to install. Uh, it streamlines from an ongoing management standpoint through our GDMS platform. Uh, it also gives you the mobility uh, as you're working, working remote or working from the house. So some of the advancements over the last few years, uh, Wi-Fi is now providing the same quality as wired connections. I'll be honest, I'm constantly over Wi-Fi when I'm using my desk phone. It is not plugged in. It's awesome. Uh, access points can now prioritize important connections, uh, including Wi-Fi voice and video, for example, where they couldn't in the past. Obviously, those access points can ensure seamless roaming as long as you are on the wireless network, uh, which endpoints can as well. Obviously, VPNs can play a big role in uh, the advancement as well. And last of all, the, the cloud, especially around the management uh, capabilities uh, of these Wi-Fi phones. So building a Wi-Fi communications network, obviously the heart of it is going to be the internet connection from the ISP. Off of that, you can deploy Grandstream access points, which can in turn provide the Wi-Fi capabilities and access to our video phones, our cordless Wi-Fi phones, our new GRP line, which has Wi-Fi models included, our GVC video conferencing line, as well as our overhead paging line with the GSC series. So a whole network of devices. For this webinar, I'm going to keep it to the WP series, as Brian mentioned. Uh, we can talk for days at this point on our Wi-Fi phones themselves, because uh, the video phones are Wi-Fi, as well as some of the new GRP models. Uh, but for this topic, we're going to keep it to the WP series. For those of you who do not know our WP series line, these are our cordless Wi-Fi phones. Uh, so they are portable. They do come with a charging dock, as you see there, uh, but also have a pretty good battery life. So we have two models. We have the WP820 model, which is that model you see there on the left-hand side of the screen and the WP810 model, which we just launched about a month and a half ago. Uh, that's gonna be the phone on the right. We'll get into kind of the differences and nuances of each one. Uh, the WP820 is our the flagship one, I guess you could say. That was the original model, so it's gonna have the, the three programmable keys there. Uh, it's also gonna be Android-based for the WP810's Linux-based. Uh, again, we'll, we'll get into kind of the nuances and how, to, how these fit in the market here in just a sec. From a feature overview standpoint, this is the WP810 here. Uh, so both of the models are actually going to have dual band Wi-Fi. That's why we're talking about them here on this webinar. They're both going to have rechargeable batteries. Uh, the WP820 battery does hold a charge a little bit longer. Uh, it's about seven and a half hours for the WP810 is six hours. Uh, they both have micro USB ports for charging. They both have headset jacks. The WP820 is going to be Bluetooth, uh, where this WP810 is not. Uh, and they both have configurable push to talk buttons. So you are able to page essentially like the old, uh, what was it, the old Nextel phones. Uh, similar, similar technology as far as that's concerned. So here are the differences in the two. Uh, the easy way to remember it is enterprise for the WP820 and a little bit, you know, more simple on the WP810 side. Uh, so WP810, like I said, battery time is going to be a little bit less than what you get with the 820. A uh, little bit smaller screen, and again, the A10 is not Bluetooth where the A20 is. 
I like to fit the 810 into kind of the decked phone market, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, from a price point standpoint, it'll be a good alternative to a deck solution. Uh, the 820 being a little bit more, like it says there, enterprise executive, if you will, has the accelerometer, configurable push to talk buttons, panic buttons, some of that stuff that you wouldn't get in the 810. So why deploy WPs? Uh, for one, there's no roaming limit within a Wi-Fi network. As long as the phone has connection to the internet, you're good to go. Uh, both of them do support dual band Wi-Fi, so 2.4 and 5. Uh, they both have web UI for remote management. The WP820 is included with our GDMS platform right now. The WP810, I'm told, should have GDMS support within the next month. So that's also coming down the line. And then, like I mentioned earlier, they both have the push to talk option as well. Uh, so that makes it easy to communicate from one device to the other. So why are these ideal for remote workers? One, most homes have Wi-Fi access already. So there's no added cost per se to get these phones online for remote workers. Uh, two, they're easy to set up and they provide seamless roaming, which we'll discuss here in a minute what I mean by seamless roaming. Uh, they do have open VPN clients built in for security purposes. They're lightweight, they're compact. Uh, in the 820s case, you can sync that up to a Bluetooth headset, for instance. Uh, you are able to keep in touch easily with coworkers through the push to talk function as well as multiple lines included in that phone. And then, uh, you know, with the 810, like I said, from a cost standpoint, you can get into some of those more cost sensitive type environments such as medical, uh, education, uh, logistics, somewhere where they don't necessarily want expensive phones that could break in environments like that. The WPs are built, built for scalability. Uh, there's virtually no limit to the call capacity when doing voice over Wi-Fi. Essentially, you just need to add access points to expand the coverage range on site. Uh, so you don't have to worry about base stations, repeaters, et cetera, uh, that you do with DECT. You just need to make sure the network is sufficient enough to uh, handle the, the calls. A good rule of thumb is typically 100K per active call. So to give you an idea of you know, what kind of bandwidth you would need to handle some of this stuff, it's about 100K per active call. Uh, that's for the high definition voice and, and all that. From an 810 standpoint, it's the most affordable Wi-Fi IP phone on the market. So I think you'll find that the cost of one WP810 is pretty close the cost of a deck phone plus a base station plus any necessary repeaters. Uh, so it allows you to piggyback on the networks, whether it's on site or somewhere else, without having to set up a parallel deck network. So very easy to deploy. You plug in the SSID of the uh, of the network itself, and essentially you're you're up and running. So seamless Wi-Fi roaming, briefly touched on this a minute ago. I'll expand now. Our WP series uh, supports some of the advanced roaming protocols. Uh, PMK, pairwise master key. It eliminates the need to re-verify and exchange authentication when roaming from a new AP on the same network. The best way I can describe this is you're driving on a road, let's say you're talking on a cell phone for instance, call will drop for a split second when you're flipping from one tower to the other. Uh, our WP series essentially eliminates that second or, or whatever you know, length of time it is when it's dropping the call when you're going from one AP to the other. So the conversation remains streamless or seamless, I guess I should say. Uh, also have opportunistic key catching, which is essentially sending a copy 
of that PMK, which I just talked about, from the client to all the APs to eliminate all the reauthentication as well. Uh, all of our APs are optimized, or our phones are optimized to connect to the AP with the strong, strongest signal strength. So we do prioritize Grandstream devices when you're using Grandstream access points. So important to note that. Now, there's a setting, WMM, that optimizes roaming. WMM is Wi-Fi Multimedia. So when enabled, that WMM setting will auto-adjust the QoS on APs when roaming to prioritize voice calls. So just hinted at this on the last slide. Uh, it also includes layer three QoS for SIP and audio. Uh, so again, when you're using Grandstream access points with Grandstream phones, prioritization happens on that network itself. Now, uh, push to talk. So again, this is going to be real similar to those old Nextel, I call it the bat phone because I just remember it being black and yellow. Uh, so there is a configurable push to talk button on both devices themselves. Uh, it's on the side, so you see the arrow there on the side, same spot on both phones actually. Uh, this will be great for remote and dispersed teams because you could push to talk from one device to another, one extension to another. Uh, you can set that up to page multiple, uh, but essentially you can get hold of anyone, anytime, anywhere, as long as they're uh, set up as an extension on the PBX. And finally, advanced security. Uh, so we're combining Wi-Fi with VoIP security. So we are doing AES encryption. Uh, that includes secure boot, random default passwords per device, unique security certificates per device, and uh, TLS and SRTP encryption. So this is going to be much stronger than uh, DEC security, including our own DEC phones. Uh, so it is going to be a safer deployment as well than what you get with a DEC phone. And both, uh, both phones do have dual mic design. So we're reducing the noise significantly, both through uh, noise suppression on the back of the phone, as well as the audio pickup on the front of the phone. It's not true noise canceling technology, uh, but it is pretty close, and you would be able to achieve that through, uh, through a headset as well. As far as interfaces and ports, so like I said, the WP820 includes Bluetooth, so you could use Bluetooth devices such as AirPods, uh, like I use myself. Uh, they both have 3.5 millimeter headset jacks, uh, so you could use a uh, wired headset as well if you so choose. Uh, like I said, they have the dual mic technology and they also have micro USB uh, ports. So not only can you charge using the base station that the phone comes with, but you can also charge with any micro USB uh, and plug it you know, directly in, into the outlet itself from there. Uh, like I said, uh, you can charge by micro USB. You can charge from base. The other thing you can do is charge from a GMC 08. Uh, so for office type environments where you have multiple devices, you can charge uh, all the rechargeable batteries simultaneously using our GMC 08, which is our battery charger, so to speak. So you also have that option as well on top of, like I said, the base, as well as the micro USB cable. As far as access, facility access solutions, you are able to tie uh, these Wi-Fi phones into uh, our GDS series for door access, uh, as well as tying them into the video phones as well. Um, so you can see a feed from the door access cameras themselves to the phone. Uh, you could use it to answer a call, let people in, uh, among other things. So you do have that control once we do get back to office type environments to uh, piggyback on your facility access with these phones as well. 
then here's some of the integrations that we have into other GrandStream products. Uh, touched on the access point through QoS, so again, prioritizing voice and video calls over the Wi-Fi. Uh, just touched on the GDS series, so you are able to you know, open the doors connected to that GDS device, use it as a wireless intercom, see a feed of the camera itself. Uh, you can connect it to our overhead paging devices, our GSC, uh, GSC series phones, or uh, sorry, overhead paging devices. Uh, so doing uh, wireless intercom over those, wireless paging, et cetera. Uh, and then our new camera line that we just launched about a month ago, you're able to receive the alerts and alarms from that camera directly to the device as well. And now, uh, I've talked about this a little bit, but the WP series, uh, in particular the WP810, being an ideal deck replacement solution, uh, you know, and set up a deck solution. So for those of you who have deployed a deck solution, uh, obviously you're setting up a parallel network to the, uh, to the Wi-Fi network. So the deck phone requires a base station, and then depending upon the size of environment, it might take repeaters to uh, you know, stretch, that, stretch that range out a little bit. With the WP phones, you don't have that problem. So not only do you not have to worry about setting up a parallel deck network, you also have virtually no limit on call capacity, uh, whereas deck you do. Uh, as long as you're on the network, then you have access to, you know, the, essentially the, the phone itself. Uh, it is scalable. You just simply add Wi-Fi access points if you need to. Uh, with DECT, you know, that, that can get expensive when you're talking repeaters, and then the more repeaters you add, the less call capacity you have. Uh, they are a little bit more difficult to provision. Uh, they're notoriously difficult to, provi to provision, I guess I should say. Whereas the WP series, not only do you have the web UI of the phones, but also GDMS uh, to, to do that. And then finally, security. Uh, the WP series of phones is going to be more secure. So AES, TLS, SRTP, which we talked about earlier. Uh, with DEX security, the voice packet encryption is much weaker than what you get with AES and the Wi-Fi series of phones. So not only is it easier to, de to deploy, but it's also safer. And again, with our WP810 in particular, the price point breaks out relatively the, the same. So just a couple models that we compare our WP810 to, uh, and I think I got specs on the next sheet. Yeah, I do. So I, we could send this, uh, we can send this PowerPoint out so you have it, but these are kind of the comparable phones, I guess you could say. So Unidata has one, Spectralink has one, and Wi-Fi Genius has one. Here's the specs of how they break out. Uh, so the WP810, it does have a little bit smaller screen than what you get with some of these others. However, you're getting features that you wouldn't necessarily get at a much reduced price point than what you would get with these phones as well. Uh, so again, I, I won't go through all of these in particular. Uh, but that's kind of what you're getting with our WP810 as far as other models that you find out there as well. As far as applications and deployments, the big one that's not on here is obviously the work from home scenarios, piggybacking off the network that's, that's already there in place. Uh, businesses are a big, uh, big part of our WP series of phones as well, especially when you're talking uh, you know, warehouse type facilities, uh, medical, where there's doctors walking around different rooms, pushed to talk from, from nurse to doctor. Uh, education is big, especially with the overhead paging type deployments. Uh, there's an overhead, you know, paging system in every room. So being able to piggyback off of that with one click of a button. Uh, retail can be big. Employees walking around the store, needing to talk to one another. They're always mobile, uh, so having that mobility aspect. In hotels, 
Uh, hotels probably aren't as big as some of these other verticals when it comes to the cordless Wi-Fi phone. Uh, but, you know, we do have the ability to piggyback off the hotels for the ones that do want uh, mobility in particular and uh, being able to walk around the hotel with that phone if you so choose. So what's included in the box with our WPs? Uh, a belt clip, uh, the charging station, the power adapter, and the lithium ion battery. So everything's coming to you that you need in the box. And then finally, touched on this earlier, but the GMC08 battery charger. So this is that uh, charger that can do up to eight batteries at any given time. You can set the capacity levels, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if you want to charge at 30%, 60%, or 100%, you have that ability to do so. Uh, there is a fan built in, so it does cool the battery. And, you know, obviously, the more batteries you have, the hotter the, the device is going to get. Uh, and it does have auto shut off should uh, the battery charger itself get too hot. So that's a, another cool feature of that battery charger. And then I think that's all I had. So here's here's our contact info. Um, Absolutely. On the left, right, the right. Chris, it looks like uh, we did get a bunch of uh, questions. So let's uh, go through a couple of these and answer your questions for you. Thank you for interacting with us. Um, so Chris, will I be able to use the forthcoming Grandstream USB headsets with these phones via the micro USB connector? Yes. So we are, in fact, I believe we have launched the two headsets today. Uh, so yeah, you, you will be able to use the Grandstream headsets. We do have to roll out a new, uh, a new firmware on the devices for the headsets to work. I'm told that'll probably be another week or two. Uh, okay. so after once we get that new firmware released out on the phones, then yes, we will have headset compatibility. Awesome. And, uh, recording. Are you able to store recordings on the handsets themselves? Uh, I don't believe it has local storage. I'll double check with uh, my sales engineer. Uh, but it definitely would be able to call record and hold that, you know, on, on the PBX or the cloud storage, or, you know, wherever you got that stuff going on the, the cloud PBX side. Okay. Awesome. And uh, finally, uh, ruggedized Wi-Fi handsets. Um, is there any plans for Grandstream? Is it on your roadmap? Yes. Uh, so we have, I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this, but I will. Uh, so we do have what we're calling our WP825. So call up an upgraded version from our WP820. The main difference in the two is the 25 is going to be ruggedized. So we are launching that. It's probably going to be early next year, if I'm being honest. Um, so we'll look for more information on that. It is in the pipeline, but I don't think it's a 2020 thing. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And it looks like uh, that's all the questions that were asked. So um, I'll, I'll be reaching out to each and every one of you one-on-one -on -one as well. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to spend some uh, time to learn from uh, Chris and myself how VoIP Supply and Grandstream can come together and uh, hopefully that Wi-Fi phone can fill a uh, solution for you. As Chris was saying that, you know, really doesn't eat up more bandwidth than any other regular VoIP call. Uh, as long as you have a good mesh Wi-Fi network, uh, this is absolutely the way to go. Uh, the push to talk feature is great and it's definitely easier to set up and more cost effective than an entire uh, deck solution, you know, be it multi-cell. But uh, Chris, thank you so much for your time today. I hope everyone uh, found this presentation very useful. We will be sending it out to each and every one of you at the end. And uh, thanks again, Chris. Yeah, no, pr appreciate you having me. Um, uh, sorry, I kind of, kind of rushed it. It was last, last minute, me filling in with, uh, 
some technical difficulties on, on some other team members. But uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to let Brian or I know, and we'll get you taken care of. Sure, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I appreciate it. I'll be reaching out to you at the uh, end of this webinar. Thanks again. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.